What's up guys? I am here in the shop. It is late at night and I'm really psyched because it's finally time to start a project that I've been meaning to do for a really long time now. And that project is to build myself a new rear bumper. Some of you guys might know that I currently run a piece of 6x3 inch, uh, 8th inch wall rectangular tube that's scabbed onto the frame of my truck. Uh, and frankly, it's an embarrassment. Uh, I would not want to use the recovery points on it. I would not want to have to use it as armor. I wouldn't want to hit any rocks or trees with it. It was really just there so I could get a sticker. Yeah, that's right, so I could pass inspection. It is absolutely time for that piece of junk to come off of there and for something way more rugged and functional to go in its place. My plan is to build a full swing out style rear bumper that has a spot for a 35 inch spare and uh, accessories like fuel or CO2 or whatever else overlanders like to put on bumpers these days, uh, maybe a fold down table, uh, but more importantly it will have functional recovery points that tie into the frame so I can yank on them in any direction and that bumper's not going to snap. It'll also be built such that I can hit it against a tree or a rock or uh, land the truck on it and the thing will take it. It's not just going to fold and crumple like a you know, piece of paper. It's going to be rugged. So I'm really psyched to have something on the back of my truck that will actually take some abuse and, you know, be a tool for adventure. Okay, so I don't want to talk forever about this thing and give it the world's longest introduction. Let's get building. Um, how I'm going to break this up is it's going to be at least a three-part series, maybe a couple more, um, depending on how long this project goes. I'm going to, there's going to be a lot of footage, so I'm going to split each video up into chapters uh, that are titled essentially the job that I'm doing at that time. So you guys can skip around, see only the fab work that you want to see, and skip the rest. So without further ado, let's get into this. So before I do any sort of large weld mint like this, I try to model it up in CAD first. So this is the 3D model of the bumper I'm going to build. Um, and for all you nerds out there, this was made in SolidWorks, uh, but I'm using an Autodesk online viewer just to show you guys. So here is the bumper with all the parts on it. And let me hide the tire, the CO2, and the fuel so you can see the base bumper underneath. For the body of the bumper, I'm actually using another piece of 6 by 3 inch rectangular tube, uh, this time with 3 16 wall instead of 8 inch wall. And I know a bunch of you are immediately thinking to yourselves, Seth, what, what's the deal? Why are you doing another rectangular tube rear bumper? They're not that sexy. And uh, you'd be right, they're not that sexy. However, they are simple to build and they end up being very strong. So I'm trading in that complexity in the fabrication work and end product for something that I know I can put together and for something I know will give me a very strong, useful end result. For the swing out, I got a little bit trickier with the design with this cool angled square tube look. This is all 2x2 two two square tube with 3 16 wall, so it's really strong stuff. Should be plenty rugged enough to carry the 35 inch spare that you see silhouetted here. And I've designed it such that I can run a 37 if I ever decide to size up. For the swing out hinge and latch hardware, I'm using parts from a company called Forex Innovations. And they make really beefy DIY swing out kits. And this hinge that they make is probably the best one on the market as far as I'm concerned because it's supported on both sides of the hinge itself. It's got dual bearings in here, but because it's a U-bracket, it is much more resistant to deflection when actually using the swing out. And so that's why I chose it for this application. Uh, the swing out itself is removable uh, via these two three-quarter inch bolts. I can remove the swing out and keep the hinge on there if I ever have to, and it'll make assembly a lot easier. And then here's the latch over here. It is also a lot of steel. It's not one of those flimsy little uh, clamp latches you might find on Amazon. It's, this is all steel, big solid steel rod and plate, quarter inch plate, and a big 3 8 16 shoulder bolt for pivoting. And if I spin it around here, you can see this pivoting plate latches into this big one inch pin that is going to weld to this bumper end. And both of these end caps that hold the hinge and the latch are removable via the, oop, I'm missing a bolt there, via these four uh, half inch 13 bolts. So I can take the swing out off, I can take the hinge off, I can take the latch off and just run the box tube if I want to for whatever reason. For mounting to the frame, I just have some 3 8 inch steel 
arms that extend out from the bumper and will mate with the frame. These are subject to change. I kind of just have them modeled in here conceptually. I'm sure I'll need to finagle the design a little when I go to put it on the truck. One other little neat feature is I'm using these flanged weld nuts in half 13 size to act as mud flap mounting points. I'm going to build some mud flaps for this thing just because Vermont requires a lot of tire coverage to get an inspection sticker. And that's the design in a nutshell. Let me unhide everything here just to show you that even though I have the tire mounted center, I still have plenty of room for accessories and activities like uh, fuel and CO2 and whatever else I decide to carry. But that is quite enough talking about the design I want to build. Let's get in the shop. All right, guys, here we go. So the very first thing I did was to trim the length of this bumper body tube because I ordered it a little long on purpose. Uh, I never trust that a shop's gonna uh, give me exactly the length I want. Uh, they might short me a 16th of an inch or that they'll give me a good cut quality on the end of the tube. So I just mitigate that by ordering it slightly long and then trimming it on the horizontal bandsaw. And then it looks like they let this thing sit outside for a night before they gave it to me. Um, and it accrued some surface rust. So I took that off of the flap wheel. Uh, it makes really short work of it. And I definitely spent longer cleaning up all the dust I made than I did actually taking the rust off the tube. And after that very minimal amount of prep, uh, I threw it on the mill. And it fits really well on the mill, actually. It fits right in the vise. Uh, it's not the most rigid setup in the world, but I can actually slide it back and forth and get it uh, rigid enough for the area I'm working. Here I'm just indicating the edges of the bumper using a little spring edge finder. That's old school, but it works really well, and it's really precise, way precise enough for what I need to do here. And uh, on the mill here, I'm just going to create the cutouts for the clevis mounts and put holes for those flanged weld nuts I showed you, and also for the license plate and a little spring, uh, little pad for the swing out. Here I'm making the cutout first cutout for one of the clevis mounts and I'm using a half inch carbide end mill and I'm just taking a really shallow cut at first I'm, I'm kind of a wimp when it comes to milling honestly I take really shallow depths of cut just because I don't want to stress the machine too hard and I'm not super familiar with you know what it's capable of so I, I tend to just run it on the easy side use a lot of cutting fluid and take a bunch of passes you can see all the chips I'm making. It's definitely not ideal, but I got away with it. How cool is that? Watch all that cutting fluid burning off. I, I really like watching that. It smells good too. And then just because it's satisfying, there's some vacuuming just so you can see the cutout. And then I used a quarter inch end mill, also carbide, to push the corners out a little bit because the clevis mounts um, are rectangular. They have a rectangular profile and they wouldn't fit in the hole if I just left those uh, radius corners so I have to push them out a little with a smaller end mill. And then here I'm center drilling the locations for the flanged weld nuts that will be the mud flap mounting points. Just using a little center drill just to uh, create a little divot where I want to drill each hole. And then I put this big honk in, I think it's 17 32nd drill bit, which I ran way too slow at first. You can see it's not loving life. And then I ran it way too fast and uh, eventually found the happy medium and luckily didn't break anything. But man, I, I did not have the drill speed dialed in here at all, but it worked luckily. Again, lots of cutting fluid saved me. There, that speed looks about right. And then because the flanged welds nuts uh, have a little bit of a fillet, I think they're stamped, so they have a little fillet when they stamp them, uh, it wouldn't just fit in that hole, or it wouldn't fit flush against the bumper plate with without a little chamfer on the hole. So I put a little chamfer on, and you can see fits flush. Good job. Well done. Here is the other clevis mount rectangular cutout on the back of the bumper that I'm making now, same um, half inch carbide end mill. A little better view here of all the chips I make and an even better view of the very satisfying cleanup. Look at that nice cutout. Looks good. Same deal over here. 
running that big drill bit into the bumper to create those spots for the flanged weld nuts. then here is a view of me trying to look like I know what I'm doing. I definitely don't. I, I'm a very newbie machinist and um, while I think I try to look cool doing this, um, I'm very surprised the machinists let me use this machine at all. Luckily I haven't broken anything yet. Anything big. But it's a lot of fun. If, if uh, you get an opportunity to learn some uh, simple you know manual milling I highly recommend you do so here is a test fit of the clevis mount you can see it's a big weld through clevis mount and looks good to me fits right in that cutout very little slop I'm happy with it here I'm marking the spots for the license plate tapped holes that I'm gonna put in this bumper I'm tapping holes directly in the bumper body they're gonna be quarter 20 um, it, I don't get a lot of thread engagement because the wall is only 3 16 but it's fine for a license plate. I don't really care. It's not exactly a load, high load application. Here, I'm just using a spring center punch to mark those spots. Then the tap drill size, which is 0.201, I believe. Yep, get that chip out of there. And the other one eats through it like butter. And here's how I tap the holes. I use a tap guide in the chuck of the mill and then just a T-handle tap. Again, this is a quarter 20. And I will just lower the quill until that spring inside of the tap guide loads up into the T-handle and centers it. And then I can just kind of manually tap this hole. I like doing it this way. It's pretty slow, but I can feel if the tap is binding and I, I break uh, almost no taps this way. <laughs> have broken a couple, but it's a lot easier to control using this method than trying to power tap it, which I'm not that good at. And here's the other one. Uh, they, they tapped really easily, luckily, uh, because I was well aligned and had a lot, of, a lot of cutting fluid, and so it went right through. Here I'm doing something similar. I'm just tapping a couple of 1032 holes on the top of the bumper. This is for the pad, the support pad for the swing out. So this is the tap drill in two much closer locations. I think they're only an inch apart. And then same deal, just using a tap guide and manually tapping the hole, this time 1032. It's a little bit finer pitch. Even this one went through easy, luckily. Smaller taps scare me a little more, but uh, this method really makes it usually trouble free. That is the extent of the machining on the bumper body. So I've brought it over to Sawhorses now and I'm cleaning up all the cutouts I've made and the edges to prep for welding. I'm using a flap wheel again, uh, that's my go-to. It gets it down to bare metal and makes it so I don't have any sort of contaminated welds welds nice and easy after I clean it up this way. Just making sure I thoroughly get all the cutting fluid off as well. First up to be welded is the clevis mount on this side of the bumper and I'm going up through the front and you can see this thing fits pretty tight. I was really happy with the fit up here. I could get it perfectly flush without needing to even hang it off the magnet. I put it I put the magnet on there anyway just as a precaution to make sure it's flush, but I really didn't need it. And then I'll just tack the back side of this with a few tacks just so it doesn't move around when I finish weld it. The other side too. And then the magnet can go away and I can run some beads on the back side of this thing. I'm using just a zigzag pattern here, I believe, and it makes for a pretty nice bead. I, I ran it pretty hot because I wanted to make sure this thing burned in well. As you can imagine, the clevis mounts will experience a lot of tension throughout their life, so I definitely don't want those welds failing. Here is the other clevis mount. This one doesn't fit quite as tight. I must have opened up this cutout a little, little more than I wanted to, um, and that's fine. I just use the magnet to make sure it's flush and tack it on the same way. And here is the finished beads for the backside. 
Again, just a zigzag pattern. Next up were these surface mount flange weld nuts and they fit really well. So you can see they fit nice and flush against the back face of the bumper. And I tack them in, uh, one tack on the bottom, one tack on the top on each one. And then I don't believe I filmed the finish welding process for these, but essentially I just ran a circular bead around the outer profile of each weld nut and then ground, I, I used a flap wheel and ground them back so the top face of the weld nut is flat. So I can use it as that mud flap adapter surface. After that, the back of the bumper is essentially done. So I flip it over and it's time to run beads on the front side of each clevis map. The first thing I did was fill in each of those little corner clearances with a tack. And then I just ran a circular torch pattern fillet bead on each face of the clevis mount. And these came out really, really nice. I am very happy with these beads and I think they'll be plenty strong enough to support all the force that's going to go through them. Here's the other one, same deal, just a circular torch pattern, taking it nice and slow, making sure I'm consistent, because these are welds that everyone will see. So I can't get away with doing a bad job. The last pieces to make for the body of the bumper are these end caps. And if you remember back when I was talking about the design of the bumper, both the hinge and latch will be removable. And this is how I'm accomplishing that. I'm using half inch 13 weld nuts that will be welded on the inside of each end cap. That way I don't need to get to the inside or the back side of these end caps to remove or mount the latch and hinge. Um, these can just be on the inside of the bumper, sealed off, and I don't need to worry about them. I have an awesome, very strong mounting configuration for each side. Once those weld nuts were burned in, I could actually weld on the end caps. And first step always is to clean up the weld area, which I'm doing once again with a flap wheel. Super versatile tool if you can't tell. And just making sure those weld surfaces are nice and clean before I go and mount the end cap itself. Then I, I lined the end cap up with the top face of the bumper and the front face of the bumper. I want those two faces to be flush. The way I designed and measured everything, uh, those are the more critical faces, so I definitely wanted to get that right. I'm just tacking it enough so it doesn't move around when I run some pretty big finish beads, which you're about to see. I'm using a circular torch pattern again, pretty wide area. I really wanted to get a lot of coverage here because these end caps are going to be holding the swing out, or at least one of them is going to be holding the whole weight of the swing out at some point, and I really don't want to have a poor weld bead be the reason that thing drops off of there. Just taking my time and doing each side uh, really slowly and consistently, making sure my weld looks good and, you know, they're as good as I can make it. I'm, I'm not a pro welder either, but, you know, I'm getting better each time. And then after those welds were in there, the very last step for the bumper body is to blend those welds down into the front back, top, and bottom faces of the bumper, so it looks like those end caps are seamless. Looks like they were always part of it, and uh, I think I got pretty close. Uh, it's not perfect, there's a couple little waves, but uh, that trusty flap wheel does a pretty good job if you take your time. And that is it for part one, guys. The bumper body is built. I am really happy with how this thing's turning out so far, but I'd love to hear feedback from all of you, so feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. Also, throw me a like, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see part two, where I'll be moving on to the swing out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. There's a lot more work to be done, so I'll see you back here soon.